So I'm from the University of Cambridge, and uh, Cambridge has a reputation for technological innovation. Why are we using GPUs? Well, from our point of view, we can't not use GPUs, because otherwise we'll be left behind, and you won't be talking about these guys at Cambridge University, you'll be talking about these other guys who are getting much better speed-ups. And we, we're, find, we're finding that we can get at least 10 times change in peak performance, and also performance per dollar and performance per watt. So you can't not be working on GPUs um, if you're involved in scientific computation. So I'd like to cover today four examples of the research that we're doing at Cambridge. So the particular branch of computational fluid dynamics that I'm interested in is um, turbo machinery. That's jet engine aerodynamics, the aerodynamics of turbines for power generation. Uh, we have a structured grid CFD solver, and with, with a Tesla card we can fit 10 million data points uh, on each uh, 4 gigabyte Tesla. And this runs over multi-GPUs, so it will run on the machines next door, and also on, on the bigger clusters. We have a, a four Tesla uh, cluster at the moment. And we're finding a, a 20 times speed up compared with all the cores of a, of a um, two and a half gigahertz quad. So on one node of the cluster that we have at the moment, we can solve the flow through this turbine. These are, these are the blades which are inside a, a a steam powered uh, a steam turbine and that takes nine minutes whereas on the single core this is single core now of a, of a standard quad core that takes 12 hours what's interesting is that the four the four cards of an s870 is equivalent to a uh, one of the machines next door with only two um, c1060 cards in so we can do full turbine analysis in 10 minutes as opposed to 12 hours so that's doing all those blades that you saw in the picture. But if you just wanted to do one blade, you can calculate one blade, which you'll be doing the routine design process, see what people do in industry all the time, and that will take only two minutes. Now, if you were to have a cluster, you could do one blade interactively on the screen. So you adjust the blade, solve the flow, and you would know instantly whether that was a better blade and when you mention this to engineers in industry, they can overwhelmed by that possibility. And alternatively, um, you can use higher accuracy methods than are available today and bring those methods into an earlier stage in the design process so you can use high fidelity models on a range of candidate geometries, not just on the final one that's going on the aircraft, where it might be too late to change. Uh, the second application is medical imaging, and in particular the registration problem so typically, these are two scans of the same uh, gentleman, I think it's a gentleman, um, taken on different days, uh, you know, so he's lying in the scanner in a different place, and you have to line up these scans to find out what's changed. So all you need to do is find a transformation that matches the first scan to the second scan. So you, you try a transformation matrix, perform the same calculation on all the voxels in the scan, so it's obviously inherently highly data parallel, evaluate some cost function, how well does it line up, and then try a new transform and optimize. So here are those two brains. We found the transformation that maps that one to that one, and so here you see them li lining up as close as we can get them to line up. On one core of the CPU, this, is, this um, algorithm takes eight and a half minutes, and on a fairly modest QDO enabled card actually, that took six seconds. 